Welcome back to another episode of our Drift Car Build-Off presented by Coil Rad and Spec Clutch. Today we reinstall this whole rear subframe mess and we install some Fortunato coilovers and StopTech brakes. Now that the epic battle of the bushings is complete, Pete's struggle to push all those bushings out that you would have seen last episode. If you haven't seen that yet, go watch it because it's uh, it's fun watching Pete punish himself with bushing after bushing after it's the rust. It's bushing. not the bushings; it's the rust. Yeah, and the fact that they're also almost 20 years old doesn't help either. Anyway, that's done, and I think installing this should be pretty straightforward, right? Just four bolts to hold up the subframe couple bolts for the, the trailing arms and she should be hung and then we can get on to more interesting and entertaining things because frankly I'm over this rear subframe job Peter this was too much work subframe is in and man what a accomplishment i feel really great finally having this back in this kind of marks a completion area of having this car all the hard work on this car pretty much done so as you saw in the time lapse uh the parking brake cables were once again a bit of an issue we had to fight with those to get them back in and get everything lined up and our bushings pushed out as we brought the subframe up the uh there was just too much of an angle that the whole subframe was on and then the actual like uh, sleeves the metal sleeves weren't lining up correctly so what we did is we just pulled them out lined everything up pushed it back in and kind of pressed it all in together and it uh, went pretty well so this is all done i do want to show our latest item to our ever-growing milwaukee collection this is the milwaukee rocket tower light it's pretty awesome we were kind of we have our, our actual studio lights here all the time, but we don't really have a good portable light that we can have standing around. And these are fantastic for that. They provide two modes of power, as you can see, one really bright and then one small one. And they work on a M12 battery, which is really awesome. So they are rechargeable. I think one of these lasts up to eight hours, which is pretty great for us, especially at the shop here. You can see there's no light under here and you turn one of these guys on and look at that, it lights everything up real quick. So they're gonna come in real handy. So with that all being said, I think it's now time we pull these old sax shocks and get into installing the Fortune Auto coilovers. I am excited. In order to get to the rear shock mounts, I think what we've gotta do here is raise our roof halfway up. I don't know if this is gonna work right now. Probably isn't because the trunk is open. Oh yeah. There's all these little things with the BMW. There's that rag gotta, in there? No, uh, I good. Okay, trunk's gotta be closed. Maybe I'll close the door because that's sometimes maybe the thing. So let's try this one more time. So now, I'm gonna hit the button. I hear things Make happening, noise. yeah. Okay. Where There's, do we go, DP? You're supposed to stop once you can kind of see down past the cover, so keep going. And right there. Okay, so here are two access holes. There's these rubber grommets that we removed. I think DP showed you that already. So now what I'm gonna do is put a 13 mil on there. Blast off the rusty goodness. Ow. Oh, the shot oh. hit you right on the left. <laughs> Uh, there we go. I'm so sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is out. Now let's bolt in our Fortune Auto coilover. I'm gonna go walk this off. I'm just in the process of installing the Fortune Auto shock. I wanted to give you guys a quick pro tip. As you saw, there's the kind of like a hole that you need to put your socket through to get to the nuts. And uh, with a brand new nut and a socket, to get it down there, you can't really reach your fingers while holding the socket. You might lose it, might fall out. So here's a quick pro tip. 
And that is to just take a piece of paper, plastic tape or whatever, paper towel works very well. And what you do, you just put your socket in with it and it creates just enough resistance where it holds it up. Now I can come in here, go like this, put it down there, get it on like a champ. Time to finish off our Fortunato setup here, but before we do, I have a small confession to make. These are the Bimmer World rear shock tower reinforcement, what would you Plates? call this? Plates. And these are designed to go on the top side of the sheet metal. And with the convertible or cabriolet, there's nowhere, there's no access point to put this down on top of the shock without like cutting a hole in the sheet metal. And we decided that We'd well, rather we, we not inspected it and it looked like it was fine. There's no cracking up there, so yeah. we're not going to do it. But uh, So these work on a coupe or... I it's guess, certainly something I would recommend if you have a coupe. Yeah, or even a wagon. I mean, any E46 that isn't a cabriolet, we're pretty sure these will fit on. Fortunately, with our car, we can't fit them up. So uh, we'll save these for a rainy day. They may come in handy for something else. So as far as finishing off our Fortunato setup, we have a, uh, a separate shock and spring or a divorced setup, as Fortunato calls it. Personally, I'm a little gun shy of using the divorced word, but that's another story. Um, no, I'm not getting a divorce, everyone. Uh, so this guy, we assume, bolts to the bottom here because there's really no way to bolt it at the top. And you can see it's got this big threaded stud on the bottom. Yep. Which looks like it'll pass down through this hole in the control arm quite nicely. So we'll, we'll use the big nut that they provide on the underside to bolt that in place. And this is obviously a functional coilover setup, meaning this is your collar for adjusting uh, the ride height. Further up we go, the higher the ride height's gonna get. But with a divorce setup like this, you also have to factor in spring preload and uh, shock length because if we were to set the ride height very low, for example, and had the shock length with this adjustment here set very long, we'd be forcing the shock to be compressed at ride height and then it would operate in a very narrow range of, of, of movement and that would wear it out prematurely. So what Fortunato recommends is setting your ride height with the spring and then setting the shock length such that it just holds the spring in there snugly without it being able to move around any. That sort of, you basically want like a zero preload on the rear spring with the shock length providing that, that zeroed out preload. And that'll put you in the right sort of uh, length for the shock for the ride height that you've chosen. And then obviously if you change the ride height from there, you'll have to change the shock length to correspond with that. So a little bit more complicated to use than a true coilover setup. And just like that, the Fortunatos are installed on this side. We still have a little bit of work to do over here as far as like setting the preload on the spring and the shock length, as well as uh, setting the adjustment for the PowerFlex rear arms and the alignment, adjusters and all that. We did though torque these all down to spec and we're gonna obviously do a proper alignment on the car on the Racket NV Auto. So for now, we wanna just get everything bolted up and in place, and then we'll come back and adjust ride height and take care of a bunch of those other details later. So in the meantime, we wanna finish off this corner of the car, starting with the brakes. These are our StopTech Sport Rotors, same ones that we ran up front. I like the fact that they come uh, installation ready, meaning I don't have to wash them or clean them off or anything like that. So, They've got the uh, you know, integrated drums on the backside for the, uh, the parking brake. So these just slide on like that. We've got our little factory uh, locating bolts, I suppose we could call them. I'll just get those in there so the rotor doesn't fall on my big toe. This is considered a mundane job, but we figured we'd show you this just because there's a couple of interesting things and that is, here's our old M3 caliper that we're reusing and I'm just putting in a new rubber boot. And that's because we said, first we, we thought, you know what, we'll reuse it because it doesn't look like it's in bad shape. But then I slid the pin in and you can just feel it's like really hard. Thankfully the StopTech brake pads come with new hardware and which includes these rubber um, guides, I guess. And what I'd like to do is I shouldn't be wearing gloves trying to do this, is fold them in half. And once you get them folded in half, you can slide them in very easily. But uh, the gloves kind of get caught. See, they always get caught. Then you just put it in there, slide it in, and sometimes you gotta just take the gloves off. <laughs> take the gloves off! 
The gloves. <laughs> the goddamn gloves. Look at my hands. They're so clean. They are clean. Now they're not going to be clean. No. They're all, the real reason we wear gloves is to keep our hands clean. But sometimes gloves just don't work properly. You just need that that human touch. That finger. Look at that. The dexterity. Oh, there it goes. Like a champion in the hole. There it is in place. And now we'll bust out what is arguably the largest <laughs> amount of grease that uh, we have ever owned here at the shop. Yep. Thank you, Valvoline, yep. for the, your multi-purpose grease. And we'll lube up one of our pins here. And now you'll see when I slide it in here, oh, that feels right. Now it feels rubbery. It feels like it has a little bit of resistance, which is nice play whereas this side here it was just hard see less play so all in all i think it's a it's a worthwhile thing to change out if you have those symptoms like i showed you on this side now that pete's got the uh, sliders rebuilt on these calipers we are ready to install our uh, stoptech sport brake pads which as we told you about on the front we think is a really good street slash track pad they don't make a lot of noise or a lot of dust, and they've got like chamfered edges and a groove down the middle to evacuate dust and keep noise down. But from what we found, they actually stand up quite well to track use and the heat that you put into the pad at the track. So good all around uh, enthusiast brake pad. And we've obviously got our braided uh, StopTech brake lines here that will hook up to the caliper in a moment. And oh, by the way, you guys mentioned with the front rotors how the pattern of the cross drilled uh, holes made it look like we had the rotor on the wrong side. In fact, we have the rotors on the right side. It's the veins inside the rotor and the curvature of those veins that help uh, draw the air in and evacuate them out that have to be oriented correctly. And in our case, they were. So the bolt pattern, I think, kind of fooled that particular viewer. If you watch us install these wheel studs, what was it, two episodes ago, Pete? I think so. These are our 82 mil long Bimmer World uh, premium race wheel studs. This is the good stuff. It's got this really heavy duty, large shoulder area that prevents fatigue and stress risers from happening in this area where it bolts into the hub. And apparently that's where they tend to fail the most. So got all the strength there. It's got this nice bullet head nose on it, which makes it super easy to get the nut on there. You can even air gun them on apparently. So, and they look good. They do look good. I like the sort of black finish on them. I don't know how well you guys can see the offset of our wheels here, but they are a little bit sunken battleship, a little too far inboard. We want to get them out there where they're nice and flush with the fenders. By the way, these are our Koenig Ultra Forms in an 18 by 9.5 plus 35 offset. And uh, we want to get them out. So how do we do that? Well, with wheel spacers. And for that, we've gone to ST Suspensions and apparently Ken Block, too. Wow, yeah. That. Ken Block. If Ken Block likes them, they must be legit. And I must admit, I think these wheel spacers are pretty amazing. This is obviously the main part of the spacer. This is a 10 mil spacer, but the cool part is it's like a modular system with this uh, centering ring that, which side is the front and back? I can, anyway, the, the centering ring snaps in here and is hub centric on the back side. So they have them for different makes and models of cars. So, and it allows you to you know, use the centering ring with different thickness spacers. So it gives you a very uh, you know, easily interchanged system. So pretty neat. Let's. Uh, pop the wheel off here, install these, and uh, see if we can cure this sunken offset issue here. Woo, look at that PT. Oh man, that, that is, is looking pretty good. Pretty much perfect. That Just like flush. the smallest amount of tuck, which is perfect. You know, so it's not gonna rub the fender. It's functionally stanced, I would say. Yes, well. I hate that, that word, Peter. Can we use that word? Can we just like retire that word? I don't know, can we? I think we should. Speaking of retiring, although we've retired the wheel bolts, we should mention that ST Suspension sends longer wheel bolts with their spacer kits so that you have the pro appropriate amount of thread engagement when you go to their wheel spacers. So it, it is a truly, uh, completely thought out solution. There's no compromises with this setup. You've got hub centric right length bolts. This is the right way to do wheel spacers. So it's a really nice system and it's fixed our aesthetic problems other than the terrible gap you have on your rear bumper and the it's rust a, that's it's, showing through it's, here. It's a drift and, car. You know, it's not the, supposed to be perfect. Come no. on. Man, oh man, DP. Look at, <laughs> Look at this. How tough. cool is this? I love it. Looks like we've got proper fit and I am loving, loving this car right now. It has come together so well. And just for the fun of it, I put a front wheel on here. Unfortunately, our uh, 
Our hoist doesn't go any lower than that, so we've got tons of gap. I'm sure it's gonna sit much better when we get it off there, but it is finally starting to look like a proper car. And I think that wraps this episode. Please give me a tub of thumbs up if you can, because we have put a lot of work into this car and I'm super stoked to get it out there very soon. So thank you very much if you've been following along. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more M3 content, it's coming very soon. And hit the notification bell to make sure that you're always up to date on our videos. And lastly, hit Patreon up if you wanna throw us a couple bucks, they are always appreciated. Or hit the memberships button on our channel. 